Hello everyone and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. In this episode, we're carrying on from where we left off last time in adding sound and hearing notifications to our enemy AI. Last time, we got our footsteps working where they play, the enemy could hear our player's footsteps around the map. Now we're going to add a modifier volume in another case when we make puddles where if we walk through the puddle, it will detect and hear that. Now for this, I have a bunker asset that I've got here uh, from the marketplace and I'm using their pre-built puddle material. However, feel free to make your own puddle material and um, here's what they did for their one. It's a mask essentially with uh, a texture applied to it. So there's your texture and there's the mask. Okay, so using this to create our puddles and this is a deferred decal. Now we use decals because we want it to basically stamp it to the floor. Um, so we're going to close that there, uh, nope, don't make no changes, and we're going to make a whole thing on here to uh, detect our puddles. So I'm going to go into our uh, folder here, and we'll just make it here, I think. New blueprint class, and we're going to choose actor, and this is going to be a puddle, and open this up. In here, you're going to add a component, and the first component is going to be a deferred decal, or just decal, rather. And the decal is going to be needing our puddle. So on decal material here, we've got puddle, and we've got puddle one or two. I'll do puddle one, and we want to rotate it so it is facing the correct rotation. So at the moment, it's going forwards, which is not correct. We need to go down because puddles are on the floor. So I'm going to rotate that down like so, and just put that in like that. The next step is to add a volume to this. Now the volume is going to be used so that it can detect when the player's entered its uh, location basically. So in here we're going to go add component and choose a sphere collision. And I'm just going to detach that from a decal. So it's two separate things here. Um, and basically leave it like that. Hit compile and save. Now the puddle is going to be placed into the world, but we can customize each puddle as we place them. So I'm going to drag this puddle out here. And there is our puddle. And I'm going to change where I place my sphere collision in the map, in the puddle here. So I can place it over here. I can change the size of it. I can do whatever I want. Now this is quite a long puddle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this first sphere here, like so. And then I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to right click on my sphere here, click duplicate, and this instance of this puddle is going to have these spheres, and they will all count towards the single actor. I'm going to duplicate another one, and move that here, change the size of it slightly, like so. And there is our puddle. Now the decal of it, we can change the size of the decal too. Click on the decal in the details panel here, and we can change that as well. Now I want my decal to be close to the ground as possible. So I'm going to change the decal height of this to be a lot lower. If it, let me, oh, it's locked. Hang on. And it's this one. Make sure you get the right axis. And we're going to push it down to the floor as close as possible. go there and there you go so there is our puddle now and we can move it around uh, if we click on the root sorry we can move the whole thing around freely line it back up there okay so I'm gonna place this puddle over here give it a little rotation there you go so this puddle is now in the world there okay now at the moment, it don't do no sound effects yet. We're going to have to add the sound effects in for when we walk over it. So we need to do that. So the first thing we need to do is have a sound effect. So in the files in the description below, you'll find a link to the series files that I've, ad I've created and added here for you. So by all means, you can download them and add them to your project um, to use, including the sound effect for the puddle. So import that in and uh, we'll get started. 
With your footsteps puddle sound effects added in, you want to make them into a queue. So very similar to how we did the queue in the first instance uh, for the footsteps, we're going to do create queue, and this will be footstep puddle queue. SFX and you're going to add the three to it randomly so exactly the same how we did before so we need three wave puddle uh, wave player sorry for set puddles and each one being a subsequent puddle and we need a random node here to randomize which one it outputs hit save close that so now we've got a footstep puddle here, we're going to add it to our puddle actor. So with our puddle actor selected, we're going to edit blueprint and open the blueprint editor. Now in here, we're going to use event actor begin overlap and get rid of those two. And on actor begin overlap, we're going to tell it to uh, play a sound effect. Now, when you do actor begin overlap, what you're doing is you're checking all of its components. Okay, so it's not just one particular component here, it's doing all of it. So the problem we're going to have with actor begin overlap though is that it's only going to trigger once as soon as I walk into the puddle, not when I'm walking through it. So what I want to do is I want to be doing a tick to check if the player is still inside it, and if the case is the player is still moving, then we'll tell it to play a puddle sound effect. So rather than use actor begin overlap, we're going to use the tick, and on the tick we're going to use is overlapping. So it is overlapping actor. And we're going to check if the other target of this is going to be get player character. Because we only want to do it when the player character plays through it. Um, is overlapping actor. We'll put that into a branch and plug that in. Now, if that is true, great. We will then check if the player character's velocity is over a certain amount. So from get player character, we're going to drag out get velocity and we're going to check the length of that velocity so vector length we'll get us that speed and then from there we're going to check if it's greater than uh, let's say 300 if it's greater than 300 we're going to put that into a branch and that means that we are walking currently through our object here now when it does that we're going to take it to play a sound effect so on true we're going to take it to spawn sound if at location. The sound it's going to play is going to be the puddle sound. So do puddle and do footstep puddle cue. The location is going to be the player location. So get player character. And then from there, get actor location. Plugging that in like so. Likewise, you do have further options down here. If you want to change the volume of it, tweak it however you like, you can do as well. And at the moment, it's set to auto destroy, which means as soon as it finishes playing, it will destroy itself. On return value, we're going to spawn, uh, promote that to a variable. And you only have this option if you use spawn sound. Okay, So that way, we can control the sound effects as they are being created. So we're going to call this one a sound instance, like so. We're then going to tell it to report that noise event. So do report noise event. And the noise location is going to be the location of this puddle. So drag out from here, get actor location. Loudness will set to 1. Instigator will leave the same. Everything else will leave the same as it is. We're then going to do a small delay. Now, the reason why we're doing the delay is because we don't want the sound to keep playing constantly. Once it's played it once, we don't want to keep playing it over and over and over again. So we're going to delay it by a small amount. So we're going to go 0.5, for example. And we can tweak this to see how it works. But we'll do 0.5 for now. And once that delay is completed, we're going to tell the sound instance to stop whatever sound it's doing. So stop there. And then tell it to be empty. So drag that out set that and leave it blank and that will make it void so the reason why we're doing that is because it's only going to do all of this and the check here if this sound instance is not valid so get sound instance right click convert to validate get 
plug that in and it's only if it's not valid it will do all this stuff that way we're not wasting our tick and we're only doing the check to uh, play the sound effect every so often okay so the final thing we need to do here is on our report noise event you want to make sure instigator has something plugged into it in this case we're going to say get player character and that should do it so if we now push play and test this out uh, let's just get our character in view here and go into per the perception view so the yellow circle you see here the hex you see around here that's yellow that is the hearing range so at the moment the sound will play but it won't be affected but now it's inside this range it will be heard and now the enemy is coming to check out the sound of the puddle And there you go. So it's gone to check out that sound of the puddle. Now what's really good about this is that it's gone, it goes by the player's velocity. So it only plays the sound effect and the report of it, of it based on the velocity of the player. So if I were to go through it crouched. We want, ah, I'm a bit too fast. So when we go crouched, we want to make it so it is not fast enough. So let's go and change that. So let's first of all find out how fast we are going. Um, I'm just going to print string here. The speed of the player. So I can see the speed of the player is going. As they go through it. So go to crouch. So I'm, I'm going 300. That's why. Okay. So if I just tweak that then. Um, to be. If it's greater than say three, uh, we'll do 350. That means the sound effect won't play. And I can sneak through the water. So if you want to still have a little bit of sound effect but a quieter one, we can go into changing this so it changes the volume based on this effector. So what we can do here is we're going to just disconnect this branch for now and we'll just take this move it aside for a second and what we're going to do is take this uh, branch and put that on the other side of this spawn sound because we want the sound to always spawn it's just the volume of it that's going to change and whether or not it reports the sound of uh, uh, report the noise event is going to change as well so with this sound instance here we're going to check and see what the volume should be based on the player's velocity so we're going to take the velocity up here which is this and we're going to do a normalize to range so normalize to range and the range we're going to go for is we're going to go for a range of say 200 and a range max of say uh, let's say 600 okay and that will be plugged into return value into volume so what's going to happen here is if our say our our speed is at 300 it's going to print print out a, uh, a value that is between 0 and 1 relative to the distance between 200 and 600 so 300 will get us around about 0 0.2 ish okay and let's just print string that so we can actually see what value it comes out as and that will then affect the actual volume of the sound but if i go into it faster it'll be closer to the top here which means it'll be closer to 1 so hit compile and let's see oh hang on let's put this other end in here so once you've got that we need to check whether or not it is going to be loud enough to report the sound noise event so when you do that you can get the multiplier from the volume from here so when you get volume multiplier and if it is greater than oh wrong one greater than and we'll do 0.8 it will then do the rest of this which is reporting the noise event so let's see what values that comes out as uh, in our game so in here if I run through this oh apologies I must have not connected something up uh, go back here up oh, yep maybe it is not valid goes here not is valid my bad so now I push play so 0.9 on 1 is the value coming out when I'm going full speed. But if I go into quiet, because it's 0.25 and the, and the volume of it is actually quieter too. 
And because that's not higher than 0.8, it's not going to report a noise event. So you therefore you have now sneaking through puddles will actually affect gameplay. See, he's not detecting the hearing the sound. But if I were to run, he would have heard that sound effect. There you go, he's heard that sound effect. And investigating the puddle. And that's it. And that's how we set up puddles for our enemy here. So the next trick is we're going to make it so that when we go near him from behind, we're going to execute him. So that we can like grab his neck and throw him into an execute mode as well. For that we'll use animation syncing. So if you want to see how we do that, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily where you can watch that part plus many other videos well before anyone else. Big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do. You're missing out on loads of cool content that's being released every single week. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.